Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film, Cruel Peter. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in Messina, Sicily, 1908. Cruel Peter watches in the courtyard as his mother, Mrs. Hoffman, arrives in coach at their villa's doorstep. Mrs. Hoffman, in an all-black gown and a veil shrouding her face, enters the villa. She and Peter listen to a maid's complaint, because according to the maid, Peter cut her face with a razor. However, when Peter denies this even though it's true, Peter's mother undoubtedly commands the butler to evict the maid from their property. After the confrontation, Peter's mother asks for the razor from Peter, but Peter says he doesn't want to give it, because his father gave it to him. Later, Peter goes to the courtyard and burns a trapped mouse alive. Then the servant boy and his younger brother angrily arrive with a chest, shouting at Peter for burying their dog alive. Peter blames them for being slow, and then threatens them that they will answer to his mother if ever they attempt to hurt him. At night, the servant boy wakes up from a dog's bark that scratches the door. When he opens it, the dog runs under his bed. He checks under the bed and sees two glowing eyes. When he tries to reach out for the dog, two black hands grab him. The servant boy suddenly wakes up on his bed, realizing it's all a dream. Meanwhile, Peter plays with a test tube containing bugs, when suddenly he hears a rock being thrown in his window. He checks the noise and finds a person wearing a sack on the head. Peter goes to the woods, confidently confronting the person in a sack mask, guessing that it's the servant boy. He then finds a plank with engraved poetry in the middle of the road, telling how Peter will face death for his cruelty. As Peter reads the words, the person in a sack mask slams a shovel onto Peter's head. Peter then wakes up inside a coffin, and through a small gap between the wooden door, he sees the night sky. He shouts to let him out, but no one hears him. A hundred years have passed. After working in the office, the archaeologist returns home and finds his deaf daughter's bedroom cluttered. So he cleans it, and finds the Book of Spirit, containing magical relics and rituals. His deaf daughter, named Liz, unexpectedly enters her room, and grabs the book from him. When the archaeologist asks why she owns the book through sign language, she only stays still, the archaeologist then leads her alone. Once alone, she flips the page onto the bishop's sphere, revealing an artwork of a woman, and beside her is a sphere with written witch inscriptions. Outside, the archaeologist fishes with his boss on the lake nearby. The archaeologist shares that he's not on good terms with Liz. The boss frankly comments that after the archaeologist's wife's death, he stops living with Liz, and they become distant from one another. So the boss offers the archaeologist a historical site for him to work with, and tag along Liz. The following day, the archaeologist follows the advice and brings Liz to Messina, Sicily. Fortunately, there's a school that accommodates students like Liz, who need special attention. Upon arriving at Messina, Sicily, they head to the English cemetery. Bianca, one of the locals, tours the father and daughter. Bianca thinks Liz will get bored in the place, but the archaeologist explains that ever since Liz was a little girl, she had already explored the catacombs in Italy. Liz explores the cemetery and finds a burnt rat on the floor. When she turns around, the caretaker stands beside her. Surprised, she immediately leaves and returns to her father. The two travel by car and arrive in a nearby town, where he and Liz will stay. Bianca explains that the school only takes a walk in the woods to reach their rented house. Inside the house, Bianca and the archaeologist unpack groceries in the kitchen. Bianca then invites the archaeologist to have lunch in her auntie's house, and he reveals that Liz is a vegan. Bianca accepts it, and says it's no problem. Meanwhile, Liz unpacks a photo of her mother on her nightstand and brings out the bishop's sphere from her bag. The following day, the archaeologist does his work in the English cemetery. He lets the caretaker digs a spot, and they find underneath is the plank containing the cruel Peter poetry and a box filled with Peter's toys, like the razor. At night, Liz draws the witch inscriptions on the bishop's sphere, attempting to summon her mother from the other side. She spins the sphere and writes a question to know if anyone's there. She attempts to summon her mother twice, but all results in nothing. Meanwhile, the archaeologist researches the town's disastrous earthquake hundred years ago, and then reads the engraved poem on the plank. Then back at Liz, who's sleeping on the couch, the bishop's sphere spins on its own, and the wall reveals yes to answer Lizzie's earlier question. The following day, Liz goes home through the woods, but suddenly, she finds Peter's villa on the other road. Upon returning home, she sees an elderly woman in bed, gasping for help. She stares at it in shock when a beautiful woman unexpectedly startles Liz from her hallucination. When Liz looks back at the elderly woman, she's gone. The woman introduces herself as Harriet, and the archaeologist arrives on time to pick Liz up. He introduces himself, and surprisingly, Harriet understands Liz's sign language. Harriet explains she lives nearby, and then bids goodbye. Upon her leave, Liz comments that Harriet's beautiful like her mother. 
That night, the archaeologist reads an article about Peter's mysterious disappearance a year later after Peter's father's death from suicide. Meanwhile, Liz attempts another try on the bishop's sphere. She finally hears an answer, yes. And when she asks who it was, it says, Mom. The balcony's door swings open as the gust of wind blows inside. She goes outside and follows a mysterious figure. However, she trips to the ground and the figure disappears from sight. Liz unexpectedly shouts, Mom, at the woman figure. The following day, the archaeologist shares with Bianca that Peter's father's death was a scandal because he was the wealthiest man on the island, but ended up slitting his own throat. Then a year later, Peter disappeared three days before the earthquake and was never found. Bianca rushes to the grave of Peter's father, but they find it destroyed. The archaeologist asks Bianca to look into the broken CCTV camera to see whoever wrecked it. Bianca leaves, and the archaeologist discovers a portrait of the elderly woman that Liz saw yesterday. He looks up from the portrait and sees the elderly woman pointing at him, saying help, but she disappears quickly. Later that evening, the archaeologist and Liz visit Bianca's house, where her aunt prepares them a meal to enjoy. The auntie gives a small gift bathed in holy water and pinned with an image of Christ to the archaeologist to protect him against evil spirits. At night, Liz attempts another summons in the bishop's sphere, but this time things go grim as an evil spirit sprouts at the corner of the room, about to possess her. Liz immediately rushes to the switch and opens the lights, which causes evil to disappear. After her attempt, Liz prays in front of the altar, and the archaeologist asks if something's wrong. Liz confesses that she had used the bishop's sphere and had hurt her mother. Still, the archaeologist believes the sphere is a toy only, and that it's impossible for her to hear her dead mother. Liz walks out in tears because her own father doubts her words. The following day, Liz is in school. She goes to the bathroom, and the sink emits black goo. Two dark hands clutch onto her wrist that leaves red marks, where she immediately backs off and runs to the hallways, covering the red marks. Meanwhile, the archaeologist arrives in his office, where all his belongings and papers are scattered. He then realizes Peter's toy box is missing. That night, he invites Bianca to a restaurant bar. He shares that because he was obsessed with a Roman sarcophagus, he lost his wife and Lizzie's hearing in an incident. When his wife died, he destroyed the sarcophagus in pieces because of regret. That night, Liz once again encounters the elderly woman in her room. A strong force pins her to the wall, and the evil spirit crawls on the wall, approaching her. Meanwhile, the archaeologist watches the CCTV footage of his office, where he finds a woman standing in front of Peter's toy box. The camera pans to the side, and when it returns to the middle, the whole room is in a mess, and the woman is gone. Then suddenly, a hand sticks onto the camera and runs downward, leaving a stain on the footage. He watches closely at the footage when Liz startles him. Liz tells him that her school finishes earlier. The archaeologist asks if she wants to pick him up and immediately apologizes for their misunderstanding earlier. The two reconcile, and Liz is about to hug him, but she stops upon seeing Andy's blessed gift. The archaeologist returns to the footage, but it is cut short. The following day, Liz surprisingly cooks bacon and eggs, despite being a vegan. The archaeologist asks what's wrong with Liz for suddenly changing her lifestyle and food. This angers Liz, so she drops his plate with food on the floor and leaves her father alone. Later, the archaeologist works in the English cemetery when a lieutenant arrives to meet him. The archaeologist thinks the lieutenant meets him from Peter's toy box thievery. Still, the lieutenant only advises him to go back to England. From afar, the archaeologist follows the elderly woman into the old church. He finds Peter's toy box inside a small crevice, but when he's about to pull it out, a black hand scratches his wrist. The archaeologist goes to Bianca's place, where she tends his wounds. Bianca believes he wounded himself out of a nail, but the archaeologist denies this. He then finds among Peter's toy box, a photograph of the Villa Hoffman, Peter's house. Later, he goes to the school to fetch Liz, but is surprised to see her playing with Harriet in the woods. He then invites Harriet into his house for tea, and Harriet apologizes for isolating Liz despite being a stranger. However, the archaeologist brushes off the apology, saying that it should be him who should be ashamed. Harriet then comments that it's normal to do the best thing for their kids, which gives the archaeologist a notion that Harriet might have a kid. The following day, the archaeologist visits the Villa Hoffman. In the old and wrecked building, he discovers a painting of Peter and his father together. Upon his exploration, the archaeologist meets the housekeeper of the villa. The housekeeper explains that he's a child of the servant boy's younger brother, who lost his arm during the 1908 earthquake. However, the servant boy died from the disaster. The housekeeper then shares the past truth about Peter. Peter was the meanest sadist, fearing nothing because he knew his mother would always protect him. Peter even killed his father to have his mother for himself, and his mother covered up the crime as suicide. Everyone knew that Peter was evil, so the servant boy stopped him by burying him alive. 
His younger brother tried to convince him to set Peter free. But when the servant boy was about to do it, an earthquake struck the town that cost him his life. Because of the disaster, no one cared for Peter and the servant boy's cruel fate. Meanwhile, Peter's mother was a witch, who performed a ritual for the elderly woman housekeeper by slitting her throat, allowing a bud to enter the slit, and Peter's lifeless voice came out of her mouth. On the same day, Peter's mother disappeared into the woods and never returned. However, people believed that she was still looking for Peter. Back at the present time, the archaeologist becomes agitated, as Liz turns into a different person for devouring meats at the breakfast table. He then invites Bianca to his house and tells her that they need to finish their work tomorrow, because he and Liz will return to London as soon as possible the next day. When the archaeologist shows the bishop's fear to Bianca, she explains that it is dangerous. The archaeologist admits that Liz has been using it to contact her mother, and Bianca asks if something has happened. The archaeologist answers that nothing happened, but Bianca convinces him that Liz should see her and he could check on her, for Liz might have left a doorway for the spirits open. The following day, Liz stays at Bianca's house. As Liz needs dough for relaxation, the auntie brushes Liz's hair, and sees which is signs carved on Liz's back. Meanwhile, Bianca hears a thud noise and finds Liz eating raw meat on the floor. She crawls away when Bianca spots her. Bianca then approaches her auntie, lying unconsciously on the ground, while Liz jumps behind Bianca and strangles her. Unexpectedly, the auntie wakes up and pins a blessed pin onto Liz's back, to fight against the evil spirit possessing her. The archaeologist eventually arrives, upon hearing the news. He finds the auntie and Bianca had covered Liz with blessed pins on clothes, while performing a purification ritual to free her from the evil spirit. But the archaeologist doesn't believe in this, and still decides to bring home Liz. That night, Liz tries to remove the blessed pins on her clothes, but it only burns her skin upon touching them. Out in the woods, she sees Mrs. Hoffman on the field, approaching her. Meanwhile, the archaeologist hears Liz's scream, while he's on a video call with the boss. He immediately goes to Liz's room and finds Peter's reflection in the mirror. But when he's about to approach Liz, who's on the bed, she disappears and appears on the balcony. The archaeologist calls her, but Liz says she's not Liz but Peter, and jumps onto the field. He follows her to the woods and spots her hugging Mrs. Hoffman. He's about to call her, but Liz gives a voodoo doll version of the archaeologist to Mrs. Hoffman, who crushes it, causing him to fall off the hill. Meanwhile, Liz lies in Mrs. Hoffman's ritual room, but she sees Peter's body instead. The archaeologist is injured and gets treated by Bianca. Bianca tells him that they need to exercise Peter's body, or else he'll lose Liz forever. But since they don't know where Peter's body is, they need to ask the servant boy's spirit through the bishop's fear. After many attempts to contact the servant boy, he finally succeeds and finds his body. Not only does he know where his body is, he realizes that Liz doesn't come in contact with her mother, but Peter's mother instead. Suddenly, a knock on the door erupts, and the archaeologist opens it and sees Harriet. However, the Annie immediately closes it upon seeing Harriet, who's none other than Mrs. Hoffman. The Annie prays to the Lord as she casts out Harriet's attempt to enter the house. The quake and loud noises eventually die down. The Annie tells Bianca and the archaeologist to go to the cemetery, since a witch like Mrs. Hoffman can't enter sacred grounds. When the archaeologist and Bianca are about to leave by car, they see Mrs. Hoffman decapitate the Annie's head. The archaeologist and Bianca arrive at the English cemetery, but the gate's locked. Unfortunately, Mrs. Hoffman arrives first and kills the caretaker by throwing it against their car's windshield. For Liz's life is at stake, fear can't slow them down. The archaeologist and Bianca find Peter's missing body in the cemetery. Bianca brings out the holy water, but it falls onto the muddy water. However, above them, blood drips off. Evil spirits swarm around them, and Bianca immediately recites the exorcism prayer while spraying the holy water onto Peter's remains. Meanwhile, Peter's spirit in Liz's body struggles in pain, as the holiness of the prayer and water cast him away. Eventually, the swarming evil spirits disappear, and Mrs. Hoffman's burning walking skeleton arrives. The archaeologist impales Mrs. Hoffman onto the metal, and Bianca finally finishes the prayer. Mrs. Hoffman's body turns into ambers that fly in the air, and Peter's remains melt on the grave. The movie ends with the archaeologist successfully saving Liz from Peter's grasp, Two months later, the archaeologist meets the lieutenant again. The lieutenant tells him that he should have left the mother and son alone, because he only drove Mrs. Hoffman and Peter together, which only worsens everything. When the archaeologist asks what he means, the lieutenant turns into a bust, meaning he's been long dead. As for Liz in the school, Peter still possesses Liz's body. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.